What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If it's a test for any other virus, I hope you tested negative for that as well. If you did test positive for COVID or any other virus, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues and no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Virus Update for Wednesday, November 6, 2024. If you're new to my channel, Welcome to my channel. This is where I do daily virus updates on all those viruses that can make us sick. COVID, RSV, flu, HMPV, MPOX, norovirus, on and on it goes, just to name a few of the many different viruses that are out there causing us trouble. And one thing is for certain, the COVID virus did not end. You're going to see here, and you're probably already seeing it on your screen, deaths with COVID still do happen here in 2024. COVID never went away and it's not going away anytime soon. So if you're new to my channel, want to stay informed with that virus or all the other viruses we talk about, subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. All right, we do have a few news stories to talk about today. Then we're going to take a look at some of our daily data, which last check, uh, the EMS, when we get to that, CADs were very busy here where I'm at in southeast Pennsylvania. Hopefully that's a little bit of a different picture when we get to that. And then we do have something new. Well, it's new to me. I've never seen it before. Something from the CDC that I don't ever recall showing on this channel. So that's very good. It's, it's a bit of data. I think you'll like it. And we're going to take a look at some wastewater data. And then we do have something from New Jersey that I found did not know existed. There was something early in the days of COVID back in 2020. But I found something that I was totally shocked to find, especially since with New Jersey, they haven't reported hospitalizations since October. And then at the end, we will take a look at New York State for today. All right, starting off in Florida, this really shouldn't be much of a surprise to people. Florida's COVID-19 deaths near 5,500 this year. However, if you're someone that's new to my channel, if you're someone that's tuning in for the first time, you're thinking, a COVID video? That was 2020. COVID's over with. Well, surprise, it's not. 5,500 deaths so far this year in Florida. To be exact, 5,484. And I know for a fact they added more deaths today, so they likely are now at 5,500. Yep, deaths are still happening in Florida. It is still a big uh, problem. And if you thought COVID's over, if you thought people weren't dying of COVID anymore, guess what? They still are. All right, moving on now to this. Something else that is problematic that is really starting to uh, pick up quickly is in the UK. But let me explain. The UK reports the fourth case of the Clade 1B Mpox strain, which is now being detected in London. All four of these cases infected with the new Clade 1B strain are from the same household and are in isolation. So this goes to show you how easy this new Mpox strain can spread. I mean, all four cases within the same household. Yikes, that is not good. Of course, we'll be keeping an eye on uh, the UK because I suspect eventually there'll be more cases. And at some point, it's only a matter of time until the United States reports its first strain of or first case of the new strain of mpox already i found this new story interesting a test to better track whooping cough strains yes they are now uh, researching researchers from the unsw sydney and the university of technology sydney uts have developed a new genomic test for identifying the specific strains of whooping cough in 2024 all states and territories have reported a rise in whooping cough cases. So this is over in Australia. Very interesting. I am going to do a thread today for today's news story. So you'll be able to read this story. Or you can also go to my X account or Blue Sky account where I did tweet this out. All right, moving on now. Afghanistan reports a spike in measles cases. It says out of 10,000 suspected measles cases in 2024, Nearly 6,000 cases have tested positive, showing an increase compared to 2023. So, yes, measles cases, they are going up over in Afghanistan. 
UK once again makes the news, confirms bird flu cases at commercial poultry farm. So yet another uh, bird flu outbreak ongoing, this time in the UK. A quick reminder that tomorrow, if we do do an update tomorrow, we will get the latest from the UK. Thursdays is the day that they update. Last week, by the way, they had 2,932 cases of COVID. And we'll get an update on COVID and a few other viruses in the UK. Again, that is if we do a video tomorrow. Taking a look now at the air qualities in the United States, and you're going to see the usual mixed picture. There's some areas that are bad, some areas that are good. And we can see from Pittsburgh down to about Tennessee, a lot of yellows and a few oranges are showing up today, even in southeast Pennsylvania. Back across California, we do have some concerning sites uh, that are showing some bad air qualities and up in idaho some bad air qualities there today also bad air qualities in the northern plains and some portions of minnesota are seeing bad air qualities as well want to learn more about the climate and weather i do have another place over on x where i talk about just that it is climate data report and of course you can go follow me over on my climate data report youtube channel that's right, I did post another video there today. I've refreshed it. There you go. And this one was about Raphael that is uh, now expected to become a major hurricane at landfall for Cuba. It did just landfall there at a major Category 3 hurricane with 115 mile per hour winds. Now taking a look at EMS calls in Philadelphia yesterday for Tuesday, November 5th, 856 EMS calls were reported. That's a pretty high number, and that's not a number I'm happy about. Now taking a look at Montgomery County, we can see here currently there are about 12 calls, slightly less than before. Uh, Limerick, Montgomery County, uh-oh, cardiac arrest. That's not a call I'd like to see. And let's hope Chester County is less busy than earlier yeah, no, I'm still seeing quite a few calls here. Chester County has been so busy all afternoon long. I've been seeing just a handful, I mean a number of sick person calls. And look at this, we're also seeing that lumber call from Montgomery County also showing up here in Chester County. Guess they needed more EMS personnel to show up to that. Uh, sick person showing up multiple times. Hypotension is showing up a few times, as is heart problems, respiratory difficulty. Yeah, it's been a busy day today, and hopefully that will quiet down soon. I'll probably listen to some EMS uh, traffic this evening just to hear what's going on. All right, Pennsylvania as a whole, we did see that there was a large increase in wastewater yesterday. In Indiana County, we also noted that there was a rise in Chester County, but remember I said it's showing the rise at the northern site, and then I looked at the charts, and when I look at the charts, it's telling me it's the southern site that's rising. Again, I can't make heads or tails of why this is so mixed up. If anyone has any ideas, let me know down below. Matter of fact, I could even put a link to this dashboard today in the description of the video. Maybe someone can figure out just why it's not making much sense. In Canada, the, the COVID-19 viral activity level is moderate, flu A is low, flu B not detected, RSV is moderate. That is the latest from Canada. I think they will update again on Friday. Sometimes it's random. I think it's Mondays and Fridays, but I've seen it updates on other days of the week as well. Walgreens, the national positivity rate for COVID is 14.1%. The prior week is 15.9%. That's a difference of down 1.8%. Alrighty, let's take a look at a couple wastewater sites. First off, here is Bridgewater, New Jersey, where we see it looks like there's a bottoming of COVID. In other words, it's not dropping that much anymore. It's dropping a little bit, but overall, it may be on the beginning of the seasonal rise, the w winter cold season. I know, we're still in fall. Someone's going to say, it's still fall down below, but it really is the fall slash winter wave or do you want to call it holiday wave? Whatever you prefer to call it, the next wave could be knocking on the doorstep for this wastewater site. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. And oh my, take a look at norovirus. Yes, it is just rapidly rising and already listed at high. Not good to see that for norovirus. Let's go somewhere further out west. Or actually, no, let's go way out west. And we will go to Hawaii. We have not checked Hawaii in a very long time. And taking a look here at Honolulu, we can see here that in uh, Hawaii, that it does look like at this time things are level for COVID, not rising yet. 
RSV. Yikes, it's still listed at low, but that is rising. Influenza A is rising. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. And wow, look at norovirus here. This is one of the highest levels in the United States. One of them. There's another site, and you've seen that before, in Harrison, Arkansas, which for whatever reason gets very high as well. All right, I want to show you something that I don't think we've ever looked at on the channel before. Why? Because, well, I think I just found this today, and I happen to be looking for data on RSV because I wanted to show something on RSV, and I ended up finding this map. It says weekly percent of test positive for respiratory viruses reported to NREVSS. And we can see here several different viruses are listed. COVID, the positivity rate at this time, looks like overall it is dropping. But then when we take a look at what is going on with some of these other viruses, we can see that the uh, colder month seasonal virus spread is starting to increase a little bit, which is uh, rather interesting. And it is getting to be that time of year where things do start to increase. And then we can also take a look at some of these uh, maps here, like this one, for example. We can see the RSV state map, and this shows the positivity, I believe this is the positivity rate for RSV. And now we're taking a look at Texas. And we can see the positivity rate is 8.17%. Florida, 9.97%. Georgia, 10.11%. Ohio is 5.42%. And Pennsylvania is 3.37%. Can't really look at all the states. You can see some states are green grayed out, and some states are white, which means, hey, really low, like Illinois, 0.28%, uh, Oregon's coming at 0.18%, Washington, 0.87%, and we can see Michigan is 0.16%, so if I'm understanding this correctly, any place that is below 3%, I think, will be listed as white, which white would be uh, a good, good color, that means you're having low positivity rate. Uh, California, white, and that's below 3%. It is at 1.54% positivity rate. Also noting here that Hawaii is 10.72% positivity rate at this time. Now, also, we can take a look at what's going on with COVID. And on this map, this shows you various different CDC positivity rates for COVID. And mind you, it doesn't include those at-home tests. This is probably not the best look for COVID. I can tell you that much right now. California. 10.90%, almost 11%. Nevada, 13.20%. Michigan, 5.50%, 5.5%, we'll say. South Carolina, 16.7%. Then we come up here to Maine, 6.7%. Kansas is 18.2%. And Wyoming is 17.6%. And what's going on in Maryland? Maryland, 10.8%. Again, don't take this... Uh, literally, I mean, obviously, we all know testing in the United States is absolutely terrible. Testing is terrible everywhere around the world. There are so many people that just do not test. Um, they take the at-home test, and that doesn't get reported. So who knows if this is actually even accurate. But RSV, uh, that's another virus. It can be expensive to get an RSV test. I believe I wanted to get one last year, and they said, oh, well, that's going to cost you $300, blah, blah, blah. Because remember early in the year... I had an illness, never did know what it was, and lasted for a few days, and I was terribly congested, having severe coughing fits. Yeah, but anywho, just thought I would show you this tool. Now, there's something else I want to show you that we have not seen before on the channel. Now, first off, here's the New Jersey dashboard. We're seeing it. zero out of 70 hospitals reported, and I thought, okay, why is it stuck on zero since October? So I started digging around, and I happened to scroll down, and I looked really closely. Look right here. It's probably really hard for you to see. In fact, you probably cannot see it at all. And I don't know if I just moved my camera or not, but take a look here. Now you'll be able to see it. Disclaimer. All data collected from the New Jersey HA Hospital Reporting Portal is subject to change, blah, blah, blah. What's this say right here? Hospitals on divert status in New Jersey. Yes, we can actually, you know, we can do it with Maryland. And I got to apologize. I don't show Maryland's enough. Sometimes it freezes up on a screen. Uh, it just goes blank and it won't show back up for several minutes. Who wants to sit here and wait for that to show back up while we're trying to do 
the daily update or the daily video. But take a look at this. We can actually take a look at the bird status in New Jersey. And AHS Newton Medical Center, they're on uh, the bird status for uh, specialty calls. We can see critical care at another hospital. There was one here that was listed earlier for patient volume. That is not listed anymore. That's good. Overall, they are doing pretty good in New Jersey right now. It does look like here at um, this one hospital, we're seeing surgical divert. But overall, you're seeing a lot of green. Green is a good thing. What does green mean? Well, green means that uh, things are normal and they're not uh, on divert. You do see another medical center that says, hey, critical care, no beds. And that will last until 9 p.m. That is in Monmouth County, New Jersey. So, hey, this is something I think we'll check on daily when it comes to New Jersey until we can get hospitalizations back. And even at that, I think we'll continue to check it. All right, taking a look at New York State. Hey, I wish we could do this for New York State. Pennsylvania, California. I wish we could do this all around the country. You know what? Maybe I'm, that's going to be a homework assignment for me. I'm going to write down, check for hospital divert status in other states. I'll Google it. Maybe it will actually come up. Maybe we'll find something. In New York State, 291 new cases. It's continuing to come down. That is really good news. Also, taking a look at this, the hospitalizations in New York State, 503. That continues to come down. In the ICU, 47 reported at this time. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the virus update. We'll have another virus update maybe again tomorrow. If it's a slow news day, it'll end up being on Friday. I think we will have one tomorrow, though. We'll get Ohio, we'll get UK, and I'm sure we're going to get some other stuff as well. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below, and most importantly, until I see you again next time, please stay safe, okay? Have a fantastic Wednesday evening, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.